Hello math learners! Do these problems seem familiar to you? That's because these are the questions we have used in our previous video about dividing polynomials using synthetic division. But today, we're gonna talk about a new method in dividing polynomials and that is by the use of long division. So, before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of these cool clear math videos just like this. Hello math learners! Welcome to another session here in ML with Sir Ash. This is still your free access math teacher Ash. And today, we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency-based lesson for grade 10 mathematics quarter 1 week 6 which is all about how to divide polynomials using the long division. Now, long division is basically the same with what you have learned during your elementary days. If you could still remember, let's say we have uh, 3,428 divided by 5. What we do here is we divide this number to our divisor, which is 5. Basically, we start with the first digit divided by the divisor. If that is not possible, we use two digits dividing to our divisor. So let's say 3 divided by 5. Is that possible? No, it's not. So we use 34. 34 divided by 5, that is 6. 6 times 5, that is 30. Now, if you are in this part of your solution, what you do next is to subtract. Okay, 34 minus 30. So that is 4. Then you bring down the next digit, giving you 42. Now, 42 will then be divided by 5, and the answer is 8. 8 times 5, that is 40. Then, you just follow the same procedure. You subtract this one. So 42 minus 40 is 2. You bring down the last digit, which is 8, and that gives you 28. This 28 will then be divided by your divisor, which is 5. 28 divided by 5, the answer is 5. 5 times 5, that is 25. And if you subtract this one, you will have 3. Nothing to be brought down. So therefore, this 3 now will be your remainder. Okay. And the number that is here above your dividend is what we call the quotient. But... Our final answer, since we have a remainder, is 685 and 3 over 5 or 3 fifth. Because that remainder should also be a part of your final answer. Because if you wanted to check that one, this whole answer will be multiplied by your divisor and you will come up with 3,428. Okay, so now let's apply that concept to our polynomials. Okay, math learners, we are here in our first example, which is 7x squared minus 4x plus 12 plus 3x cubed divided by x plus 1. Now, the first step before starting your long division is that your dividend must be arranged in the decreasing order, meaning that you write first your highest degree or highest exponent down to the lowest exponent. Now, if we observe our dividend here, the highest exponent is located in this part, right? So therefore, we will transfer this one to this part. So let's try 3x cubed plus 7x squared minus 4x plus 12. And now this will be eliminated. Okay, so now this is already arranged. Now, what is the next step? If this is already arranged and then your divisor is already here, the next thing you should do is you cover your divisor, the, for the, the second term of your divisor. So you cover this one, leaving you x, and you cover the remaining terms, leaving 3x cubed. Now, this is very crucial because that will be the answer for this one. So we have 3x cubed divided by x. Now, in long division, you must have an idea on how to divide monomials, meaning that you know about law of exponents. 3x cubed divided by x, the final answer for that is 3x squared. So therefore, 
3x squared will be the one to be placed here. Now, question. Sir Ash, why did you put it here on the second term, not on the first term? It's because we are dealing with two terms here. So you will start with the second term. Okay? Now, after you get this one, you will then multiply this to your divisor. Okay. So how do we do that? So you just do it by distributive property. So 3x squared times x, that is 3x cubed. 3x squared times 1, that is positive 3x squared. Then, the same as the long division or the division in elementary, when you arrive in this part, you will subtract. So 3 minus 3, that is 0. 7 minus 3, that is 4x squared. Bringing down your next term, that is 4x. Now, the same process, you will cover this one, you will also cover this one, giving you 4x squared divided by x. That's the 4x squared, this is the x. If you divide 4x squared by x, the answer is 4x. So therefore, positive 4x will be written on your next quotient. Okay? Now, this 4x will then be distributed again, giving you 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 1 is positive 4x. Next thing you do is you subtract 4 minus 4, that is 0. Negative 4 minus 4, that will give you negative 8x. Why is that? Because in the rule of subtracting integers, this minus will become plus, this 4 will become negative, giving you negative 8. Clear? Okay. Next, you bring down the next term or the last term, which is 12. So the same process, negative 8x divided by x, so that is negative 8x divided by x, the answer is negative 8. So therefore, this is negative 8. So negative 8 will then be multiplied to your divisor, giving you negative 8 times x, that is negative 8x. Negative 8 times 1, that is negative 8. So therefore, if you subtract this one, this will be 0. 12 minus 8, that is positive 20. So now this will be your remainder because there is no additional term to be brought down. Okay? Now, what is the final answer? The final answer is 3x squared plus 4x minus 8 plus 20 over x plus 1. Same goes with dealing numbers with the remainders. Is it right? Now, let us go to our next example. Okay, math learners, we are now in our second example. That is 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 4. The question is, Sir Ash, why did you put a space here? Now, remember what I've said earlier that it should be in the descending order. Now, this is already in the descending order. However, there is a missing term here. If you could just observe, 2x cubed is in the cubic term. 6x squared is in the quadratic term. While the linear term is missing, and this is your constant term. The linear term is a number with an x to the 1 power. But we just read it as a term with an x. Okay. So therefore, since there is no linear term here, we put plus 0x. Okay? So be particular on that matter, my dear math learners. Now, we can now continue to our division. So first is, we cover this one, leaving 2x cubed. Then we cover this one, leaving x. So that is 2x cubed over x. If you divide this one, the answer is 2x squared. Now, you put your 2x squared here. Okay. So, 2x squared will be multiplied here. So, 2x squared times x, that is 2x cubed. 2x squared times negative 4, that is negative 8x squared. Okay. Then, you subtract. So, the result in subtraction is the difference. So, 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that is 0. Negative 6 minus negative 8, that is positive 2x squared. You bring down your 0x, which is the next term. Now, 2x squared divided by x, that is 2x. Okay? So, therefore, 
here you put 2x. Okay, so this 2x will again be distributed. So that is 2x times x, that is 2x squared. 2x times negative 4, that is negative 8x. So 2x squared minus 2x squared, that is 0. Okay, 0 minus negative 8x, that is positive 8x. Because 0 minus negative 8, that will give you a positive sign, giving you positive 8. Then you bring down negative 4, okay, or minus 4. Now, 8x minus 4 will then be divided to this one. So that is 8x divided by x, and the answer is positive 8. So we have plus 8 here, and 8 times x, that is 8x. 8 times negative 4, that is negative 32. So, if you subtract negative 8x and 8x, the answer is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 32, that is positive 28. And this will be your remainder. And your final answer is 2x squared plus 2x plus 8 plus 28 over x minus 4. And that will be your final answer. Easy, right? Now, let us go to the third example. Okay, math learners, we are already in our third example, which is x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 10 divided by x minus 5. Now, the first thing you should do is to check your dividend whether this is arranged from the highest exponent down to the lowest. Okay, it is arranged. Next thing is to check whether there are missing terms. 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Okay, so all of the terms are available. So now let us proceed to the division. We have here x to the 4th divided by x and the answer is x cubed. Now this x cubed will then be multiplied by the two terms of the divisor. So x cubed times x, that is x to the 4th. x cubed times negative 5, that is negative 5x cubed. Next thing you should do is you subtract. You subtract this one, the answer is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 5, the answer is positive 1. So you can write 1x cubed or just x cubed. Then you bring down the next term which is negative 6x squared. x cubed will then be divided by x and the answer is positive x squared. x squared times x, that is x cubed x squared times negative 5, that is negative 5x squared. You then again subtract. So the answer here is 0. Negative 6 minus negative 5, the answer is negative 1. Or you can just write negative x squared. You bring down the next term, that is 3x. So now negative x squared divided by x is just negative x. Negative x times x, that is negative x squared negative x times negative 5, that will give you positive 5x. Now, if you subtract this one, the answer is 0. 3 minus 5, the answer is negative 2x. You bring down the last term, that is 10. So, negative 2x divided by x is negative 2. Negative 2 right now will be multiplied here, the answer is negative 2x. Negative 2 will be multiplied here, that is positive 10. Now, as you can see, both this one and this one are identical. So, therefore, if you subtract them, the answer is 0. And this is an example in which we don't have any remainder and our final answer will be automatically this one. x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 2. Very easy, right? Now, let us go to the fourth example. Okay, math learners, we are here in our fourth example. This is just... Very easy because this is in a quadratic term or this is just a quadratic expression divided by a binomial. Though, there are times that if this is the case, we can just use the factoring method. But since this is a long division, so let us use this kind of process. Now, the terms are complete and they are arranged in a descending order. Now, you can just Cover this one and cover this one. So y squared divided by y, the answer is y. y times y, the answer is y squared. y times 6, that is 6y. Now you subtract, the answer is 0. 
5 minus 6, the answer is negative 1. Why? Okay, or just negative y. You bring down the last term, which is negative 6. So, negative y divided by y, the answer is negative 1. Negative 1 times y, the answer is negative y. Negative 1 times positive 6, the answer is negative 6. And the two terms or the two binomials are the same. Therefore, we also have no remainder on this problem. And our final answer is y minus 1. Is it right? Now, let us go to our final example. Okay, math learners, we are now in our final example. We have a binomial divided by a binomial. However, this might be come tricky to you, my dear math learners, because this is x to the fifth and this is just x, which is in the first degree. So, remember what I've said earlier, that first is you check whether they are arranged. They are arranged in the descending order. However, the next thing you should consider is whether all of the terms are available. This is x to the fifth. We don't have x to the fourth, x to the, or x cubed, x squared, x. We have constant term. Therefore, we will move our minus one here. We put zero x to the fourth, zero x cubed, zero x squared, zero x, and finally minus one. Okay, now our given is very long, right? But do not be worried because we can still solve this one. Okay, now let us divide. So x to the fifth divided by x, the answer is x to the fourth. x to the fourth times x, that is x to the fifth. x to the fourth times negative one, that is negative x to the fourth. Now you subtract, this will be zero. Zero minus negative, that will give you positive. Okay, so that is positive x4. You bring down 0x cubed. You divide this one. The answer is positive x cubed. You then again multiply this one. That will give you x to the fourth. That will give you negative x cubed. So zero. this will be 0. 0 minus negative x cubed. That will be positive x cubed. You bring down the squared. Okay x cubed divided by x, that is positive x squared. x squared times x, that is x cubed. x squared times negative x, that is negative x squared. So this will be 0. 0 minus negative x squared. And the answer is positive x squared. You bring down the linear term. So we have x squared divided by x, that is x. So x times x, that is x squared. x times negative 1, that is negative x x. So if you subtract this one, this will give you positive x, bringing down okay, so x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 that is basically positive 1. So 1 times x, that is x. 1 times negative 1, that is negative 1 and they are identical, so therefore the final answer here is 0 and we don't have any remainder, therefore this will be your final answer x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. So I hope you have learned how to use dividing polynomials using the long division. So now this is the time that I will challenge you whether you have learned or even master our topic for today. And here it is. Okay, math learners, I hope you have a wonderful time learning about our discussion for this day. This is still your free access math teacher, Ash. And if you do have any questions about our topics, feel free to write in our comment section below. Always remember that it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you for sharing this video and even the other videos that we have to all other students that can be helped by our channel. Keep safe, thank you, and God bless. Fellow math learners, if you think you like this video, hit the like button and the subscribe button. That is if you are committed of learning mathematics the easy way. Thank you.